I'm Alexander Bellon. Uh, I work for Bellibre. Uh, I will speak about uh, Gribus for IoT. Um, so first, I will uh, just introduce uh, quickly Gribus and why we started. And then I will uh, explain why we may use it for IoT. OK, first, uh, everything begins with the Project ARA. Uh, so the goal of the project era was to start a modular phone. So the goal was to have an uh, interchangeable module. The module could be add or removed at runtime if we to switch off the phone. And we, the goal was to support any type of module, such as the screen, camera, uh, even the AP was supposed to be a module at the beginning. So to make that work, uh, we had to develop uh, a new protocol, Grebus. The role of the Grebus was to manage the modules and uh, to add, add them, remove them. So um, features of Grebus was mainly hot plug and hot remove. Uh, the module discovery, when you insert the module in the phone, you have to detect it to prepare it to be connected to other modules, such, such as the IP. And modules provide a lot of class and protocols. And that's the main interesting thing uh, with Grebus. So here is a list uh, of protocols and classes supported by Grebus. Um, for IoT, I think most interesting, uh, most interesting Classes are probably ChipIO, uh, SPI, S uh, It's really common bus used uh, in IoT, UART also. So what is interesting with uh, these classes is when you insert a module, uh, Grebus will do everything. If you insert a module with uh, SPI uh, protocol, uh, Grebus will automatically create uh, SPI controller. So after that, you don't have to do anything except use the SPI controller. So why Grebus may be useful for IoT? Uh, first, because it's free. Uh, everything is open source. Everything is free of use. Um, even because the project die, uh, there is no anymore Google to try to control it. So it's only owned by the community. Uh, it's documented. Uh, there is a lot of documentation. It's a, a good specification because the goal was to create um, a standard. When we so there is everything that is highly documented, and you can start uh, if you read the documentation, you can write everything. Um, it's very good. Uh, now it's merged to kernel. It's in a staging. So you can use it now. Um, that's good. And the main interest of using Rebus uh, for IoT is to keep the intelligence in the host. On the microcontroller used uh, in IoT, there is some memory constraints, some uh, power constraints. Um, so the goal here is to use your Linux as a gateway to control the, um, all the devices you may have on your IoT device. So you can use the SPI protocol to access to your sensor, and the driver of the sensor will remain on Linux. And that's very interesting because most of these sensors already have a uh, driver in Linux, so you don't have to, to write anything if it's already supported. And when everything is uh, correctly made, it just works. You just insert the module, and you access, you read and write things on your SPI bus. Nothing else to do. Uh, it's easy. My goal was to have for this uh, speech uh, a demo. Unfortunately, I've been stuck with uh, Bluetooth. I've not been able to make it work on this board. but. Uh, it's still a good example of what we can do with Grebus. So on this board, there is plenty of sensors. Um, this board has been made by TI for uh, IoT. 
and there is a motion sensor, there is a um, pressure sensor, and some other kind of sensor. All this, most of these sensors are uh, on the i square c bus, and with the bus, we could use them directly on the host. So, um, here is a little schematic of um, what we can do. So, we have four sensors on I square c bus. So, here, nothing to do. Um, the OS already provides uh, some driver to use the I square c bus. The only thing there is to do is just to implement Grebus to control the I square c bus. So, not a lot to do. I will show an example uh, later. Uh, the Grebus protocol has been made by kernel people. So, some of the, some of the protocol is really similar uh, to what we already have in Linux. I mean, GPIO uh, is a good example because uh, it's almost similar. You have GPIO set, set value, GPIO set direction, things like that. So even for kernel people, it could be easy to implement it in firmware. And on the host side, uh, again, except the change I have made for IoT, there is nothing to do. Uh, Grebus will do everything. And then for our sensors, uh, the I square C controller will be created when we, we will start the module. And then you will be able to uh, bind the driver with, and then use IIO to access to all your sensors. The four sensors on the, the, here are already supported by Linux. So nothing to do here except to bind the driver to IIO because there is no, because I square C is not uh, a not plug protocol. There is no way to do device discovery. So you just have to bind the driver and that's it. Um, I, not, not, I need to speak about Unipro because um, when we start the project ARA, we choose Unipro as a transport, um, as a bus for the modules. So most of things in Grebus currently are uh, made for Unipro. And that's a big part of what I did is to try to translate Unipro things in um, something else such as TCP IP or Bluetooth. So Unipro was, uh, is an interconnect to used in the mobile phone to interconnect IC. Uh, in the project ARA, you use it. Uh, actually, there is some other application of Unipro. Uh, I mean, uh, there is UFS, that is um, application layer that uses Unipro for flash system uh, to connect flash to the IP. There is some other application, I don't know if they are used or not, such as CSI and DSI. And the goal when we start to Grebus was to add Grebus to this list. So Unipro uh, was, uh, is a nice speed interface with high bandwidth. It's supposed to be low power, but it doesn't support hot plugs and Actually, it's not made at all for modular things. That's why the Grebus was needed. So um, the topology of the Grebus, uh, first, everything is supposed to be modular. Uh, the IP was a module, uh, and then we have all the modules are around the switch, the Unipro switch, and so you can interconnect a module with the IP or two modules. And there is the SVC, that is a key component. The SVC is, was, uh, is a microcontroller that is supposed to detect a module, to create a route between two modules, and things like that. So to use Grebus for IoT, uh, I had to change that because obviously we don't want to add a microcontroller to do such things. So instead, I did everything in uh, software, 
and I removed the capability of uh, the AP to be a module. No, AP is just a sort of gateway, and we plug module on this gateway. Uh, connection of module may be, uh, actually, it's a Bluetooth or TCP IP. Uh, I think we can add other way to connect uh, quick physically, easily. Uh, I think there is uh, some other radio protocol that, uh, that are used in uh, IoT, such as uh, Zigbee. So I think it's just, we just need to add another layer for Zigbee, for example. Yeah, I'm working on BLE uh, at this moment. <coughs> so uh, here is how we are describing uh, Krebus, um, a module, a device. First, we have the device, and the device may have one or more interfaces. Uh, actually, for, for uh, IoT, we don't care. Um, we do only <coughs> need one interface. Uh, on, for ARA, we add we had the ability to have one or more interfaces because modules were, uh, because of size modules, some of modules had uh, two physical interfaces, so we were able to use two Unipro interfaces at the same time to improve performances or to do dedicated things. Here for IoT, we only use one interfaces. And then the most important part of the Grebus description, I mean, uh, is um, the bundle. So the model is the place where we define what class we want to use. So we have here in my sample, I have two bundles. The bundle zero is uh, the only one mandatory. It's the control bundle. Uh, when you insert a module, uh, Grebus will use this bundle to load the, sorry. So the bundle zero is used for the control protocol. The control protocol is used by Scribus to get the manifest. The manifest describes the list of the bundle we have in your uh, device and will be used by Grebus to create all the interface we want. <laughs> and, and inside the bundle, you can have zero, one or more support. Uh, support is something specific to Unipro, but is really similar to uh, a socket in terms of TCP IP. So it's used in the same way. And to each support, we assign a control, um, sorry, we assign a protocol. So the bundle defines the class, and the class may have one or more protocol. So a good example for IoT is the, bund the class uh, GB5. And the GB5, you can use the protocol GPIO, protocol I2C, and things like that. When you insert a module in Grebus, it will add some uh, entry in CCFS. Uh, I will not detail that. But by using the CCFS, you can access to every interesting information uh, about your Grebus device such as vendor ID, product ID, uh, kind of protocol, is your device support. Here, uh, I give a little example of a manifest. So the manifest is used to describe your device. So in this example, the most important thing is the support descriptor. Here, I'm using the GPIO protocol and the bundle descriptor that is using GB5, not really, but GB5 uh, class. So when Grebus will see this um, manifest, it will create uh, the GPIO controller. <coughs> and from here, on the host, we will be able to use GPIO remotely. So if we continue with the GPIO sample, if your kernel is compiled with GPIO uh, class, you can directly control your new GPIO controller only by using CFS. And so there is nothing more to do. Magic. <laughs> um, now, if we take a look in the firmware, uh, the protocol of GPIO is quite simple. And 
as I said, is really similar of what we have in Linux. So here is just an example of uh, what I'm doing in, uh, in Nautix, uh, the way we were using for uh, Project ARA, just to set up, to set the direction and the value of a GPIO. Uh, another interesting part. So currently, Grebus is still a work in progress. Uh, we have worked on Grebus for two years. There is still a lot of things to do. And even uh, on my side, Grebus for IoT, the change I made are still in progress. So there is some limitation. Uh, I will start with the first one, performances. Uh, yeah, actually, performances may be variable because um, some protocols are only sending one RPC at a time. So if we have bad latency, we will have bad performances. So for example, if we are using the GPIO protocol to make, uh, to bring a LED, uh, if we have very bad latency, the LED will be blink very slowly. So for some protocol, we made it because uh, we had hardware limitation with our platform. Uh, we had not enough memory. For some other platform, for some other protocol, it's just um, we don't have the choice. I mean, if for a GPIO we are sending two RPC in the same time, one to switch on and one to switch off, uh, it won't make sense because uh, we can't control the time between the switch on and the switch off. So for some protocol, maybe for some usage, because of that, it not be uh, adapted. But for some usage, with, if we have bus or things with low latency, or if we don't care about performances, Grebus may be perfect. Uh, another thing, it's power management. Uh, we, st we were working on it when uh, project uh, stopped, when uh, Google made error query. So, <laughs> so, so there's still a lot of work to do in power management. Um, for me, for IoT, I think the most important missing things is the remote wake up. Uh, currently, if we want to suspend a module, uh, we will have to wake up it regularly just to know if there is something uh, to do, if there is something that change. There is no way actually currently to restart the connection when the module is suspended to notify the host that uh, we have something to do. So that's something we need to complete to make. So another uh, important limitation and I heard it a lot of in other uh, speech, is security. Uh, currently, Grebus doesn't define any security things. Uh, I mean, there is no encryption, nothing like that, and that's uh, very bad. Uh, if we are using Bluetooth, it's not really important because Bluetooth have encry encryption, is doing peer-to-peer, -peer, so it's protected. Uh, but if we are using TCP IP, uh, there is no protection. We can sniff uh, what is happening on TCP IP. We can inject Grebus uh, operation. So for some usage, Grebus actually is not safe. So we need to add some security to Grebus. Uh, another thing, it's uh, Grebus. Uh, Actually, currently is a module, so we need to load the module to use it. So we can't use Grebus as is on your smartphone for the moment. So if we want to connect uh, IoT device to our smartphone, we have to use the smartphone as a gateway to a real uh, to a Grebus host. So nothing. Uh, blocking, but uh, something that will increase the latency, so we have to take it in account. And my current implementation only work on uh, local net, local network. So, 
participe IP, uh, I'm using Havai to discover a new module and to detect when the module is removed. So obviously, it only works on the local network. But again, it's just software, so we can add a new protocol to discover a uh, module. It's not something blocking. Um, still, even if I'm not able to make a great demo like the one we see uh, we saw uh, during the uh, the ah sorry the keynote yeah I wanted to have something a great demo but I've no, didn't have enough time to do it but I still have something working I've um, when we were uh, working for on Project ARA, we were using GBSIM, uh, a Grebus, it's a Grebus device simulator. So kernel team, we are using it to continue to develop Grebus. We thought to have for a firmware team to implement the new features and things like that. So right now, we can test and um, play with Grebus for IoT by using GBSIM on bigger and black. It should work also on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, if you want to try, um, there is a sorties available. Uh, I still have a lot of work to do, but I take it the, if you use the branch ELC, uh, you should be able to reproduce the setup and start to play with Grebus. So now what I want to do um, later is to upgrade um, all my software because right now I don't, I, the software I'm providing on my uh, GitHub is not compatible with the um, latest version of Grebus. Uh, when I start to this work, we were still working on ARA. It was not uh, stopped. And so I used the sources, uh, the public sources. I was not used the internal sources. So, my, the whole software is a little updated, and I need to update it to support the new features. Uh, and so the one thing, I really would like to have a platform, a good platform for uh, firmware. I really would like to have uh, an OS such as Zephyr that will support Grebus completely, and then no, we will have nothing to do. If Grebus is working on OS, all the platforms supported by the OS will be supported by Grebus. And so we would just have to do everything on this OS and we work. So now, if you are interested, uh, you can contribute. Um, this project has been started and financed by Google, but now uh, Google doesn't care anymore. So we can do what we want with this project, with uh, Grebus. So now it's all, and uh, we just have to make it uh, awesome. So if you want to contribute, uh, you can help. Yeah. Voilà. Uh, do you have any question? Yes? Uh, what do you mean my session? Sorry? What do you mean my session? I had a session which is quite similar. Oh, I heard about your session. I was not able to attend. Uh, sort of doing the same thing. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think the main interest of Grebus is, as, uh, is already present in kernel. Even if it's staging state, uh, and there is a lot of work to complete it, we already have something working. Well, the idea is to be able to put it in a really Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Effectively, the the part to bind the driver is <coughs> not the best solution, 
And the, I know there is some uh, thing we have with different tree uh, could be best. But for the part itself of the protocol, Grabus is already there. So maybe we. Yeah, uh, you, you I'm still working on Zephyr to have the Grebus stack, but uh, actually, uh, you don't have to have the wall uh, Grebus stack. I mean, you can at build select if you want to have GPIO, if you want to have uh, SPI, things like that. So except Grebus core uh, to send and receive packet, you don't have to have the wall uh, stack. Yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, you don't. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be cheaper. Uh, yeah, ac actually, Grebus is uh, in the either it's both B yeah, both BFD and uh, GPL. Oh, okay. So you can write an implementation of Grebus in uh, BSD or Apache or whatever you want. You can also say it's GPL, yeah. Okay. No, no. Uh, I currently, what I'm doing is just uh, I'm simulating some RS things. Uh, a lot of Unipro, we have a lot of Unipro operation, and so when the application uh, receives it, it just tries to fake everything. So right now, it's just handled by the user space application. But the best thing to do is definitive to, definitively to remove or to abstract Unipro, Unipro things. So there is a chance to make in kernel to, for that. Yes. So if you go back to the contribution slide. Yes. What's missing from there is a mailing list and a website. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if for kernel we have a mailing list. Okay, yeah. Good point, yeah. Okay, any other question? Yes? Yeah, uh, for Bluetooth, I'm using the um, inquiry. So uh, continuously, I scan uh, Bluetooth to see if there is a new device, a new Bluetooth device. Uh, same for uh, BLE. And for TCP IP, I'm using Avai. 
So I'm using Avai. Zero, zero conf. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Not yet. Yeah. That's already a, a big mess. Uh, we, we need security. Any other question? No? Okay, bye. thank you. <laughs>